What's up guys, Andrew from Silver City Reef. Today I thought I would give you a brief update on what's new and what's been going on. Obviously this is the 40 breeder build and I have made some changes since my last update. Right here you can see I added the Tail spot Blenny. If you've been following me on Instagram, you would know I bought him a little over a month ago. Uh, I just added him. So, as you can see, the firefish aren't really used to there being somebody else swimming around. Hopefully, they get along. Um, everybody was friendly in quarantine. And that was the tail spot, the yellow watchman goby, which is usually underneath this rock. But I don't see him at the moment. Um, also the royal grama and a platinum clown. So, obviously I already mentioned, I also added the Yellow Watchman. There are a few new pieces in here. Let me switch over to Pro Mode so I can get you some good footage without the blues. Alright, so hopefully this is a little bit better without the blue light being so intense, but you can see already probably some of the new pieces. Um, I just want to touch on the growth of this Midnight Princess Favites. It's doing quite well. The big heads that were in the front split into two. The Marble Eye Favites, I cannot seem to get to grow. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I did just move it there and it seems to be a little bit happier now that it's not getting as much flow, but I guess we'll see. Um, Torch is doing good, just 8, so it's a little closed up still. Here's one of my new pieces. This is a German Blue Digi. And the piece next to it is the uh, Purple Tip Stag, which bleached out when I dipped them. One of these days I'll get a new tank so it's not all scratched up and cloudy. Um, this piece right here was sold to me as a Favia, but I'm pretty sure it's either a chalice or a platy of some sort. Definitely doesn't look anything like any of the Favias or Favites that I have. This is the bubblegum Digi that died during the tank crash. Uh, clearly it's slowly coming back to life. Kind of just been letting it do its thing. This one's hard to see with the light, but that is the blue Pavona. Got a ton of growth on this. I'm very happy. To the left is another piece of the German Blue Digi. And here is a pink Millie that I picked up from my LFS. They were closing down, so everything was 
30% off and I pick this up this was a pretty good deal um, as you can see I cut a good chunk off of it um, I'll insert a picture from when I first got it so you can see the full size but I'm gonna end up cutting some more and I'm not sure if I'm going to spread it out a little bit or just sell the extra pieces I did sell some of it already and pretty much paid for the piece which is real nice so this is pretty much all extra or I got this piece for free if you want to look at it that way in the front here the bright green is the Spungoda or Spungodes in the back is another acro I picked up from the LFS for 30% off it's a little aggravated because of the Millie overshadowing it but it's green with yellowish gold polyps and it actually almost looks as if it has a maroonish red base this camera is not very good for getting close-up shots to the right of that in the back is also another acro that I picked up from them this one is just purpley red maroon with greenish yellow polyps then we have a frag of the Millie and a frag of the Millie up front this little one is a Garf Bonsai we have this bluish green um, Acropora that I'm not sure what the name is uh, could be a Echinata I would say that that's probably what it is but if you guys know let me know down in the comments below I'm not sure what this piece is but again that was one that bleached out when I dipped it in the back is the tricolor, which unfortunately is losing a lot of its color. Um, I think the low phosphates is causing me some issues, so I'm going to be working on that. Then we have a Forest Fire Digi, Green Slimer behind that, a chunk of the Millie behind that. This is another acro I have no name for, but again, it lost a lot of its color. It's supposed to be purple with green polyps. Uh, this is the Tub Stellata Monty, which I can't say whether or not I've noticed growth from it, but there's definitely uh, a lot more polyps than there were before, so I'm pretty sure it is growing. Um, this is a pink lemonade in the back that again died during dipping. A new frag of bubblegum digi. I'm not sure what this one over here is. <clears throat> it was supposed to get PC rainbow so it could be that one or it could be that one. Um, in front is the green tort. The Hulk Lepto um, needs a better placement. It lost a lot of its color as well. Rainbow Acan has grown quite a bit. Uh, it has two complete polyps, and the one in the front is just about three quarters when it's opened up all the way. Right now, it's still a little closed up, but. I can't wait for this to color up and continue to grow. Here we have the Mystic Sunset Monty. I will get you a better photo once we go around to the other side. This is the Meteor Shower Cyphastria, which looks a little green in my tank for some reason, but this has been growing extremely quick um, you can see the 
four polyps around the edge. Those are all new from when I bought it. If I can find a photo, I will put it here. And the Ultra Leptoceros has been growing like crazy lately. Um, it's reached the rock finally. Ever since I moved the Hulk Lepto away from it, it seems to be a lot happier. Um, trying not to move or touch anything. And I'm also trying to keep my hands out of the tank as much as possible. Sand bed is still covered in whatever this is. Um, not sure if it is cyano and the chemiclean just didn't work. I did do a second dose and ran it for about 24 hours. Things were fairly clean, but it's all just coming right back. I'm working on getting my phosphate up and pretty much all my levels back where I want them. Love this tail spot and how he just hides everywhere. Uh, so let's move on to the side. I also picked up this mag float cleaner, glass cleaner here. And uh, I got this for 10 bucks. I think that was a really good deal. Um, I know most of the magnetic cleaners go for like 40 bucks, especially the like flipper cleaner. I would love to have one, but I just can't see spending 40 bucks on a magnetic cleaner. Here you can see one of my trochus snails. And this is the green stylo that died when the tank had that crash a little while back. And I say it died, but clearly it didn't, or it's growing over its dead self, which could actually be the case, but I'm pretty happy that this has come back. Um, I'll be even happier if it grows, so I'm just going to leave it alone and see what happens. Uh, it just goes to show you that you shouldn't pull something out right away if it looks like it's dead. Um, you never know. Could come back. This is the side view of the Mystic Sunset. This thing is also growing like crazy now that it has adjusted to this tank. As you can see, there's like a ton of algae everywhere. Can't seem to get it figured out. Now I wish I could show you the other side of the sunset, but it's definitely growing. You can see it's reaching down to the rock. I am going to end up fragging this for a friend, but I'm trying to let it grow as much as possible first. The colors on this are absolutely amazing. I love the blue and the red. The blue is really the camera doesn't really do it any justice, but the blue really stands out. So here's a slightly better shot of that green tort. Um, this one is starting to color up nicely. Obviously I have a lot of issues with coloration. I think it's mostly due to my zero phosphate, but um, hoping to work on that. Probably going to get some Neophos from Brightwell and dose that to help bring the levels up. Um, as you can see this is starting to encrust a little bit onto the rock. So I'm pretty happy with everything's growth and I'd say I got things kind of figured out. Now I just need to get the coloration in check and I think that's going to all be fixed once I figure out my phosphate levels. 
Now, as for the sump down below, I decided to go back to no filter sock to try to bring up the phosphate when I had things running where I wanted them. Um, you know, nitrates were at about five parts per million and phosphates were at 0 0.03. I was just running the skimmer and the refugium. Obviously, Kato wasn't really growing that well. This is a new ball that I picked up from Algae Barn. And I feel like it has grown. This was two ounces. I think this was um, a tennis ball, maybe. What I grabbed from them. So, I do feel like it's growing. I took the Zetlite E200 off and went with this 150 watt UFO Chinese black box style light that I picked up off eBay. Um, a lot of people recommended this and from what I can tell I think it's going to work out well. My ATO was blinking because every time I set the power heads to feed mode the level in my sump fluctuates so I have to disconnect it and after 10 minutes it starts blinking. Um, the media reactor is still running, I just shut it off because the pump, this MaxiJet 1200 is extremely loud. Probably going to replace that or I'd love to run a manifold instead of this black vinyl tubing. But it's going to be a project so it's just a matter of when I get to it. Now I just wanted to talk quickly. I've been using the Red Sea Trace Colors A, B, C, and D and been following the Bulk Reef Supplies recommendations of 1 mil per 51 milligrams of calcium dosed. So I think it seems to be working. Everything seems to be happy. That's kind of when I started seeing things go a little bit better. Um, Obviously, I'm going to have to do a longer term review, and I will keep you guys posted on how things go. Alright, I forgot I was still in the pro mode with the settings for the blue light, but I also went to Harbor Freight, and I picked up this Dremel, and I got this for 18 bucks. I had like a 20% off coupon, so even without it, it's only like 22 bucks. And I got it because I needed something better to frag the Millie. I had bought these from my LFS. And they were selling these for $40. So I paid like 20 bucks for them. They are the Aqua Vitro bone cutters. And these things are trash. Like, absolute trash. I don't... I don't know if there's supposed to be a cutting edge on here, if they're just trying to break them, but this, it, it doesn't cut anything. Um, it can't even really cut a plug. So I am extremely disappointed with those, and I strongly, strongly advise you not to buy them. Uh, so that's pretty much everything on this tank. Uh, let me show you guys the quarantine and I'll give you a little sneak peek on the new frag tank build. Alright guys, so I have quite a mess going on in here, but here is the quarantine with the last two fish that are just waiting to... Well, the clown has about three weeks left for 30 days, but... He looks really good, um, he's eating, he's swimming well, getting along with everyone. I don't think I'm going to have any issues with him. My LFS has been really, really fantastic with the, um, basically the quality of the fish, the health of the fish. Um, they do run their tanks with uh, Prozipro in them. and. 
I was watching these clowns for quite a while. They were probably there for at least three or four weeks before I bought this one. And when I bought them, there was only three left. This was the smallest one and the best looking one. He was swimming the most. Uh, there was one that was just like rubbing up against a pipe. And the other guy was just really big. I'm trying to keep all the fish roughly the same size. But, again, um, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with him. So, I may add him once I add the royal. I'm trying to add the fish in a way that everyone can establish territory. But nobody's going to cause problems with anybody else. So obviously I added the watchman first, he is the smallest, and I let him pick his burrow. And then I added the tail spot, and as you saw, he's pretty much picked his burrow now. So, next up will be the royal, and I'll let her declare her territory, and then I'll let the clown do the same. Now, I'm not sure... I think I have plenty of hiding spots. If not, I have no problem adding some more rock and making some new caves for them. Honestly, I might do it anyway. I don't have any plans of adding any more fish other than maybe a scooter blenny. I really like those. Or I may get a female yellow watchman and I was told it would be no problem to get another tail spot blenny as well so I may get those so I have a pair of each and obviously the pair of firefish kinda like having things in twos I really wanted to get a pair of clownfish but at the time I just I didn't really like the other two that were there and now I'm a little concerned that if I try to add another one after adding this one that they're not going to get along and there's going to be some issues especially territorial wise but if you guys have any experience with adding a second clownfish after the fact please let me know because if it is at all possible I would really like it um, I kind of wouldn't mind having like a different kind just like a regular Ocellaris or Maybe just something black and white. We'll see. Um, anyways, here is the frag tank. Now, I picked up a few things for this. I will be making a separate video. I'm just giving you guys a quick sneak peek. But, got some egg crate to make frag racks. Um, over there, there is some marine pier, which I'm not sure if I'm going to use that in this tank or not. Um, I do have one cube in the back and I'm probably going to pick up I was thinking maybe one more cube and a box of gems or maybe two boxes of gems we'll see um, don't really plan on keeping fish in here if I do it would be, be maybe just one or two and they'd be small like the yellow watchman so now I washed everything and cleaned everything real well. Obviously I'll do it one more time before I set it up. This did come with a mat for underneath, but I did add another piece of, I'm not sure what kind of foam mat it is, but it was shipped, something was shipped to me and it came with it. And it works perfectly for this type of situation. So all I did was cut it and put it underneath theirs so it's like a double layer now this is kind of just waiting on these guys to be moved over and then I'll work on getting it set up like I said I did wash everything though it's pretty much ready to go I will be making a video about building these frag racks I already cut them all basically one piece for the bottom and then two shelf pieces and um, I'm going to use PVC so just 
follow, uh, just subscribe to my channel if you want to see how I build those, um, or to follow along on the frag tank build in general. Here's a quick sneak peek on what is going in, and that is it. Oh, one more thing, I did pick up this, I believe it's a Two Little Fishies um, Nano Mag, and honestly not that impressed. I like this side of it, it's very small, but the inside, I'll try to do this without losing it. Not sure how well you can see this, but the inside is just like a piece of foam with a magnet in it and like a coarse Velcro scrub side. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. I kind of thought it was going to be more like um, the mag float, but it is what it is. Again, it was cheap. I definitely paid less than 10 bucks for that, so... The ink bird, running good, running strong, no complaints, but uh, let me jump, I'll show you guys the mini complete tank, I know this video is rather long, but I have not done any updates in a while, so. Alright guys, so last but not least is the mini complete tank, now. I am not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing with this. I will put out a full update specifically on this build, but um, I'm getting a lot of algae, which kind of looks like it may be dinos. I mean, the GSP is struggling and I just feel like things could look a lot better let me switch over to pro mode so I can get some better shots for anyone wondering what I am using to cut the blues this is a Samsung Galaxy S7 in pro mode with the white balance set to 10k so the Blasto is doing awesome this is probably the only thing that's really thriving in here, I feel. But the algae is just taking over. Just now I have three little GSP polyps, but as you can see, the algae is just everywhere. The zoas are alive and open. However, I'm not sure if they're really doing well in here. So I will be doing a complete update on this, but there's some things to consider before you decide to try to make this into any kind of saltwater tank. Anyways, that is it for this video. I know it was rather long, but just wanted to update you guys on everything going on. Uh, I appreciate everyone for watching. If you want to see more or to follow along, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. Again, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Remember, reefing ain't easy.